Hello there. I am Cool Gray, and this is Cool Gray in Studio A, a mini-sode for my Patreon specials. This is mini-sode number two, and today, because I'm just finishing up the first season of Cool Gray in Studio A, Creativity Born of Trauma was the subject matter, and we did six episodes about that. So just to close the chapter there, I want to tell you a story today in this mini-sode, and that story is about an absolutely amazing, courageous, phenomenal, world-changing artist, and her name is Marina Abramovich, particularly her story about one very special exhibit and what it taught us about creativity, what it taught us about trauma, what it teaches us about ourselves, who we are, what we're made of, what we're capable of. Marina Abramovic is a conceptual and performance artist originally from Serbia. She refers to herself as the grandmother of performance art. She explores the body as art, endurance art, and feminist art. And she's deeply interested in the body's ability to endure extreme or repetitive stress, where those limits are and whether they can be pushed, using herself as a test subject and an objet d'art. In 1974, after receiving some critical reviews that called her and her art attention-seeking, Marina responded with an exhibit in which she herself did nothing at all, while the public served as performer. Her Rhythm Zero exhibit was staged at Studio Mora in Naples, Italy. The young artist stood on a low platform, unmoving. Beside her was a table on which was displayed 72 objects, and these ranged from various food items, flowers, perfume, water, and a mirror, to markers, a Polaroid camera, and chains, knives, razor blades, and a gun loaded with one bullet. The attendees were instructed that they could do whatever they wanted to her using any of the items on the table over the six hours of the exhibit. Abramowicz would do nothing to intervene during this time. The event commenced at 8 p.m. Some of the first attendees stepped up and caressed her hair, kissed her, put a flower in her hand, and fed her. Around the third hour, Someone spit on her, sending a shockwave through the crowd. Another person, apparently emboldened by this act, took blades from the table and cut off Abramowicz's clothing, leaving her exposed. The artist stood unmoving and expressionless, tears forming in her eyes. Others stuck things onto her face and body and wrote on her skin. Some of these were the very same people who had kissed and caressed and fed her earlier. It was as though the first aggressive act had unlocked something in them, given them permission to explore a darker side of themselves. In the fourth hour, someone cut the artist's neck and then sucked the blood that oozed from the wound. She would be cut many times after that, little nicks and slices. She also endured a few small sexual assaults, all the time standing still, but crying by this time. As the aggressive acts continued to escalate, a protective group formed in response to their alarm at the artist's abandonment of choice during the performance. Since she would not act on her own behalf, they would intervene. When one attendee picked up a loaded gun and held it to Abramowicz's forehead, things had reached a dangerous limit. The gun was placed in the artist's own hand, her finger pressed around the trigger with the barrel aimed at her neck. Fueled by crowd mentality, several people picked up Abramowicz and carried her to a table where she was laid down. It appeared a very serious sexual assault was about to take place, and the protesters in the crowd objected. Arguments grew loud, and the aggression was overruled. The protectors restored the artist to her standing position. They treated her wounds. They covered her exposed body, and they even offered her a cigarette to help her calm down as she continued to weep. At 2 a.m., the exhibit was declared over by venue guards. Released from her obligation to remain still, Marina stepped down and began to move and walk around the space. Some in the crowd, clearly convicted about their behavior, were so unsettled at seeing the artist moving as a living, breathing person and not an object that they ran from the room. Later at her hotel, Marina gazed in the mirror and noticed that she had suddenly acquired a gray streak 
in her hair. When asked about the exhibit later, Abramowitz had this to say, and I quote, the experience I drew from this work was that in your own performances, you can go very far, but if you leave decisions to the public, you can be killed. Now, I don't want to pontificate about this story. I simply want to present it to you and invite you to go and look up Marina Abramovich, her work, her other performances, the brave soul that she is, the groundbreaking, innovative art that she has brought into the world. Celebrate her, learn about her, and just spend a minute meditating on this particular exhibit and what it tells us about ourselves. I'm not going to force my opinion on you. I'm just asking questions. What are we? Are we good? Are we bad? Are we evil? Are we violent? Are we compassionate? Are we kind? Are we all of these things? Are all of us all of these things? I just want you to spend some time thinking about it. And maybe spend a little time thinking about what you would do had you been in attendance on that day. And so with that, I'm going to close the chapter on creativity born of trauma. In this case, trauma created in the midst of creativity. I'm going to wish you a happy, happy holiday season. Welcome you back in the new year for the fresh series that's beginning in January. And until then, I want to say thanks for listening. Come on back and I'll see you next time.